I'll take days off, do I? Do I? When my number is called, I'll take plays off, do I? Do I? I'ma always give you 20 and 10. No matter how much you wanna pretend that I ain't clutch with it. I don't do the low management. Maybe I can handle it. When the heat is on, I can manage it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Others Receiving Votes podcast sponsored by MGlow. I'm your host, Lauren Woods, a.k.a. Big Low. Welcome to the Friday Inferno. And uh, you know what? Before we get into the topic, today I need to address some shit. I don't usually answer back to comments or trash talk that was made um, about me or or other people or whatever. I, I usually just, you know, I, it, I, it doesn't usually bother me. I don't really care too much. But a couple of months back, one of my friends uh, who I went to high school with uh, shared like a snippet of a podcast with me, and it kind of irked me. And there was some kid that went to the same high school that I did, uh, basically talking about how he was the best player to ever come out come out of the high school. And uh, for, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm, I'm from St. Louis. I went to Cardinal Ritter High School or Cardinal Ritter College Prep High School uh, in St. Louis. Shout out to Cardinal Ritter. And, uh, you know, big basketball program, you know, long before I got there, long after I left. Uh, and it'll, it'll be producing, you know, tons of top talent, you know, forever. Uh, but basically the kid talking about how he was the best player to ever come out, come out of Cardinal Ritter. And, you know, I mean, with with no statistical evidence uh, whatsoever that I heard, you know, now I don't really know the kid. Uh, I saw some highlights of, of him play. Uh, he was he was all right, you know, off the top of my head right now. I can't even really remember his name, but um, that doesn't matter. I didn't know everybody that, that came out. You know, this was two decades after I left high school. Um, so, you know, more than two decades. So, you know, I wouldn't remember all the players that came through and there were a ton of them. But, you know, no stats like, um, you know, all time leading score, you know, in in Cardinal Ritter history. And, and, and maybe I, I didn't even check, um, you know, or like the most state championships ever uh or maybe the highest national ranking ever like yeah you know like my you know we were we were top eight when i was there uh but you know like back when when the other boys that was there like carowell and woods um you know they they had only reached like top 20 you know top 20 they was only like ranked 19th or 20th 20th or something like that you know but it just had me thinking like you know (laughs) like where does young fella come off thinking he has the right to speak like that, especially about the program. You know, nobody's ever bigger than the program. Um, You know, how you get judged is by, you know, what contributions you made to the program. You know, you respect the guys that were there before you. And then when you get there, you do whatever you got to do to to make sure that, um, you know, you keep the program, uh, you know, high actually in better shape than when you got it, you know, you lift it up higher than, than uh, when you received it. And then when you leave, you hope that the guys after you, they lift it up higher than, um, than what you did. You know, uh, I mean, if guys before me, you know, like Julian Winfield and Smokey Evans, you know, like those, those killers and, and Heidi white, um, big, big time players, you know, um, then, myself and Chris Carwell came through and, you know, we, we did our thing, um, you know, raised a couple of banners, got, got some national recognition and, you know, did well. And then after we left, you know, guys like Brandon Campbell came through and, and, and did his thing. And, and Gerald, Gerald Weatherspoon came through and, and did his thing. And, um, you know, it's, it's so many more guys that, that came through and made serious impacts and embodied, what the Cardinal Ritter program um, is all about. You know what I mean? And I, I, I just don't, I, I don't like to hear, you know, guy, for one, like what, you know, why you even talking about yourself and kind of, and, you know, putting down other guys in the program. I don't, I don't really get it. You know, it kind of irked me, but that's not even what I was going to talk about today. What I'm going to talk about today is, um, you know, because I, I, you know, I work with kids a lot in basketball and uh, training and coaching and clinics and all this stuff. And, and, it, and it always bothered me how or why kids get so upset when they don't do when they don't do something right in basketball. And I was the same way 
to be honest with you. And that's why it bothers me so much now because I know better. And, you know, I mean, just, just things, little things, you know, like missing shots or, you know, losing, losing the, 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 the ball, you know, um, on the dribble or making a bad play or, or not getting a rebound or, you know, all these little things that, that happen in basketball, no matter what to everybody. And, you know, especially like the younger kids, it's like, you, you know, you haven't earned the right to be that upset yet, you know, to be that disappointed yet. And this is something I, I, I talked to my son about, you know, uh, I worked with my son a lot uh, over the past few years just um, to hopefully help him, uh, you know, raise his his game, his game up and, uh, you know, get him to the next level. And and it's something that that I've seen with him you know, over the past few years. And it's like and, and I work with I have a, a, a few other kids that I work with. They're the same way that they just get so upset when something doesn't go right after only picking up the game for a year or two years, you know, like you got to earn that right to be upset. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't, you don't earn that right after a few months or for training, even a couple of years, you know, you, you got to do this for, for decades, you know, for five, 10 years, 15 years. Then you start to get like, okay, I've been doing this for a long, long, long time, you know, and things aren't going right. I, I, I gotta I gotta make some changes or I gotta shift some things or whatever. But still, even even that to me, again, now that I'm older, looking back on it, and I say this time and time again on the podcast, looking back on it, if there were things that I knew then that I know now, I probably wouldn't have got upset, you know, ninety percent of the time, uh, or ninety percent of the times that I did back when I played, because I realized that it's not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. You know, and I always like to refer to pros and not just pro players, but the superstars when I make this point, especially when I'm talking to the kids. You know, I'm like, yo, pick your favorite player, you know, and I got a bunch of kids that I work with and, you know, it's always, you know, like LeBron or Steph Curry or Kevin Durant and all that, you know. And I'm like, okay, like watch them play, any of them, any of those players, watch them play a game or two or three games. And if they didn't make any mistakes, then you have a right to be mad. But guess what? They all make the mistakes, you know, all those. And those guys get paid $50 million a year and they still make mistakes. You know what I mean? So it's like it's it's disrespectful to the game that you think you could pick it up and master it without putting in countless number like just so many hours it's just I can't even tell you how many hours or days I played basketball you know all the way up until the end of my career at 39 and I was still making mistakes at 39 when I could see things like happening way before they were going to happen I knew some things were going to happen and I still would make a mistake and you know and I put in de three decades 30 years of work into basketball, you know, and, and it took me all the way up into the end of my career to learn that it's not that big a deal, you know, to make those mistakes because everybody makes them. And I try to teach it to the kids as soon as possible because they have to understand. And if anybody's out there working with kids and or you talk to them, you got to understand that one, it is just a game, you know, but two, I know a lot of us that, you know, come from, you know, certain backgrounds. It's like the only thing that we have to get out or to make our way out of a tough situation, you know, so it's a little bit more pressure, but still, you know, you, you got to have fun. I mean, like I said, if your favorite player makes mistakes and they're the best of the best and you're an amateur, then just relax and focus on the craft. Just relax and just work on whatever you you have to work on that day or that week or whatever your goal is and just work on those and just work towards those and just have fun doing it. I mean, that's one of the most important things anyway, to have fun. Because that's all it, it it is a game, and yeah, it can reap a lot of benefits if you get really good at it. But you still need to have fun. You know, it, it's already a ton of pressure that other people are gonna put on you, and that the game is gonna put on you alone. You know, you might as well yourself just come with a relaxed mind and a focused mind, and then just just try to have as much fun as you possibly can.
you know, and I guess that's that's how we should approach everything in life. You know, I'm learning business. I just started, you know, really taking business serious over the last couple of years. And I get really upset when things don't go as planned or something goes wrong. And, um, you know, I don't have the right to get upset because I haven't put the time or the amount of time or the energy and effort uh, you know, the guys that are like 50 or 60 or that have been doing business for 20 or 30 years have done. I don't have the right to, to get upset. I just got to focus on, you know, relax, focus on the, on the craft, focus on becoming better and, and have fun doing it, you know? And I, you know what? See, I, I just learned something myself. See, y'all thought this podcast was about me teaching y'all a bunch of stuff, but I'm teaching myself too, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, and that's pretty much all I wanted to say today, man. I, I've been thinking about that. You know what? The, by the way, let, let me just let me just go back. Let me go back to the to the whole Cardinal Ritter thing, and and let me put my two cents in, since I have done this for thirty years. Basketball, by the way, played it since I was ten, so I guess it's thirty one years now. I'm about to be forty two, so I guess almost thirty two years because I still get in the gym now. It could still give out a little bit of work. Don't get it twisted at 42. But the best player in Cardinal Ritter history was and still is Chris Carrawell, hands down. Chalk it up. I don't care what nobody says. You know, sorry to, to all, all my guys out there who put in major, major work, but I'm just, I'm just letting you know what I saw, period. I mean, I'll give you the reasons why. See, I, I have, you know, evidence to prove why. First of all, he should have been player of the year in St. Louis his sophomore and junior year in high school. Player of the year. Would have been player of the year senior year for sure, but got hurt at the end of his junior year. You know, had had shoulder issues. That's all right. Didn't really matter. Um, still balled out. Two state championships, junior and senior year. Ranked top 10 in the nation until he got injured. And let me just talk about who was in my class. In the class of 96, I'll just throw out a few names. Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Jermaine O'Neal, Tim Thomas, Mike Bibby, Winford Walton. I mean, we Mateen Cleaves. I mean, t- just b- big, big time players in that class. All NBA players. There was probably about like 20 or 30 more that went to the NBA. Kenyon Martin, Morris Peterson. I mean, that that's the class he was in. And every single All-American he went up against at that time, toe-to-toe, either gave them work or or played them uh, straight up. But it it was never like he walked out on the court and then somebody gave him the business, period. Chalk it up. I'm telling you what I saw. Oh, by the way, um, ACC Player of the Year at Duke, you know where like a hundred other all-everything players went? Coach K&M, in case you forgot. Back when the ACC was a beast. And to be honest with you, in my opinion, he was the best player out of St. Louis. From his his senior, from his freshman year of high school to his senior year of college, I think he had the best career out of St. Louis for eight years. You know, and it's a ton of it's a ton of guys that you can throw in there. You know, and I didn't even really get to see Tatum and Beal play. And and uh, David Lee, I saw a little bit of him, you know, like and all, all those boys were some monsters. And there was forget about it. We can go all the way back to JoJo White and them, and and bring it all the way, you know, to to the youngest guys who are coming out now. And I'm sure it's a ton of guys that's giving out major major work. But I'm talking about for eight years from freshman year of high school to senior year of college, the accomplishments, um, the accolades, everything that he did to come from where he came from and did it. He's the best player out of St. Louis. That's my that's my opinion, you know. And I mean, all, all I gotta say is just just do a history lesson before making unsubstantiated claims, you know. Just let that sink in. I'll take days off, do I? Do I? When my number is called, I'll take plays off, do I? Do I? I'ma always give you 20 and 10. No matter how much you want to pretend that I ain't clutch with it. I'll do the low management. Maybe I can handle it. When the heat is on, I can manage it. I'm kind of like James Hart's career. I can walk whenever I feel. And that's fact.